Hello, and welcome to our training series for the WTE T-Rex PLC. In this video, we will be covering how to create a simple PLC program, simulating it using the PLC configuration tool, and run it on a physical T-Rex device. This series assumes a familiarity with ladder logic and general PLC functionality. The WTE PLC configuration tool is available for, as a free download at wte.co.nz. Once the PLC configuration tool is installed, we can open it to see a default project. Our goal for this video is to create a PLC program that will detect input 1 being closed by a motion detector, and will switch on two lights for 10 seconds whenever motion is detected. If motion is detected while the lights are on, the timer will reset and the lights will stay on for another 10 seconds. The default project shown here consists of a single rung which switches on output 1, here denoted by Q1. Note that Q1 is also present in the right hand pane under Program Resources. The first step for this project is to hook in our motion detector on input 1. This is done by selecting the first rung input position. As you can see when we mouse over, this area of the rung is highlighted in blue. Clicking this area will allow us to configure the type of rung input. In this case, we want digital input 1. We then click apply to close the dialog. Next, we want to change the output of this rung. We do not want to use this input to directly control an output, but we do want to track its state. Therefore, we will use the output of this rung to set one of our working memory bits. Specifically, work bit 1. We can now see input 1 and work bit 1 under our program resources pane. However, these names are not particularly descriptive. We can rename these resources by clicking their labels in the rung display, here highlighted in yellow. We can call digital input 1 motion detector input and then we can call working bit 1 motion detected and as you can see these names have appeared in the program resources pane now we want to have a 10 second timer run whenever motion is detected to do this we must first create a new rung we start by selecting the rung menu for rung 2 here we will change the rung type from empty to a main rung. This has created a new default rung at rung position 2. We then set the work bit as the first rung input. Note that the name we configured appears here. Next, we need to set the output to enable timer 1. Now we can see that this dialog window has changed. We can now configure timer 1's parameters. We want to set this timer to trigger after 10 seconds. Note that the time configured here is in 100 millisecond steps. This means that we need to set this value to 100 to get a timer that will trigger after 10 seconds. We will name this timer Light Timer. We can now run the program by selecting the Run button. Currently, the program does nothing. We can now open the I.O. window by selecting the I.O. button. Here we can see the I.O. for all simulated T-Rex units. The local unit is the one which runs the PLC program that we are currently developing, while remote units can be controlled for wireless long distance I.O. For now, we will be focusing on the local unit. On top, we can see the digital inputs, and on the bottom, we can see the digital outputs. We can enable di uh, digital input 1 by clicking it. 
Now we can see that timer1 is running under the program resources pane on the right hand side. Currently, this timer will only operate while input1 is closed. We want the timer to continue to operate even after input1 opens again, and we can do this by latching the timer. We start by creating a new branch below rung2. We do this by selecting the rung menu for rung3 and changing the rung type to a branch. Be sure to stop the program before you continue. We now want to change this branch input from the default input1 to the timer1 timing flag. This flag is only active while timer1 is counting up. It is not active when the timer1 is finished. We will rename this flag to give it a descriptive name, such as light timer timing. Next, we can add a comment to this rung and its branch to make it clear how it operates. We do this by selecting the menu for rung 2, selecting insert, and choosing main rung comment. Now we can click this orange block and enter our comment, which will be this block ensures that our timer is latched it's first debated. We press enter and that comment is now saved. Now that timer1 is correctly set up, we want to attach it to digital output 1 so that we can use it to control our lights. We start by selecting rung 4, switching the rung type to main. Next we select the first rung input position and we set the input to be a timer enable flag. For timer 1. This flag is set whenever the timer 1 output is enabled. We will give it a descriptive name such as timer enabled. Next, because this is already set to output 1, we will give this a descriptive name light 1. Next, we also want to be able to control light 2, which is attached to digital output 2. We can do this quickly by selecting this rung and selecting copy rung. Next, we go to rung 5 and select paste rung. As you can see, this has branched the output for rung 4. Next, we select this output and we change that to digital output 2. Click done. Give it a descriptive name, light2. And now our timer is controlling our lights. Now we can run our program. If we select run, and then open up our I.O. screen, we can see that when we trigger input 1, outputs 1 and 2 will switch on. And once we open input 1, outputs 1 and 2 stay on. This is repeatable. But you may have noticed that if we trigger input 1 again, our timer does not reset. We want our timer to reset so that the lights stay on for 10 seconds every time the input is triggered. To do this, we will need to set up our input to reset our timer. To set up our input to reset our timer, we want to branch uh, the output of rung 1. We can do this by selecting the rung menu, selecting copy rung, and then selecting again and selecting paste rung. This will duplicate the rung underneath and branch the output. From here, we can select the, this branched output, select reset timer, and select done. Give us a descriptive name. And 
now when we run our program, you can see the timer here. Whenever we trigger the input, the timer is reset and the lights stay on for another 10 seconds. Now that our PLC program is completed, we can load it onto a physical T-Rex unit. Shown here is a T-Rex unit attached to an I.O. display board. The switches on this board control the digital inputs, while the LEDs display the states of the digital outputs. We begin by configuring this unit to run PLC programs. We do this by opening the menu, selecting System, Quick Set, PLC, Selecting Apply, pressing Up, and confirming in the pop-up. We then exit the menu to save the configuration. Returning to the PLC Configuration tool, we can now export our PLC program by selecting File, Generate Configuration Files. If prompted to overwrite existing files, we select Yes. We are now prompted to open the folder containing the exported files. We now connect our T-Rex unit via USB. This will be detected by our computer as a mass storage device. We then copy our generated configuration files to the T-Rex's internal storage. We can now disconnect our T-Rex device. We can now see on the PLC display uh, the ladder logic program that we created. When toggling input 1, we can see outputs 1 and 2 switch on. Releasing input 1, outputs 1 and 2 stay on for 10 seconds. The states of each rung input and output can be seen in real time on screen. Thank you for watching.